afternoon, Guardian. The Hijabi Gamer here, and it's time for another weekly legendary weapon faction roll weapon roll guide. Because why not? I'm actually having a lot of fun learning about different uh, weapon rolls, and I'm really hoping to try and get the time to do it with armor as well. Because I'm finding myself more and more aware of the different weapon combinations that are available. In original destiny it's making me interested in looking more into the ones on destiny 2 despite my lack of anyway so as you can see i always try to start with the future war cult because and it isn't because i'm a member of the future war cult i'm a member of future war cult because i need to get the new time to explain um it's because um it's easy to go just down the you know from one side of the tower to the other side of the tower now just a reminder this is original destiny as you can tell by the tower. The first thing is let's just see if there are any new people here. So that's me. Not a new person. New person. Ooh, not, not, definitely a new person. That person left, but not a new person. Definitely, definitely another new person. No, three new people. That person's gone. So three new people. So like I said, there are new people. And every single time I've gone to the tower... I have seen new people and I highly recommend picking up Original Destiny. Um, I think you get a decent amount of content for the price. Um, I know the game doesn't reset. At least there's no trials and there's no Iron Banner and there's no seasonal events. But you do still have the weekly reset, the weapon rolls reset. And um, there's it's a lot of campaign. I mean, you're basically getting all of the DLC for if it's not on sale. 60 bucks anyway this is lakshmi 2 i'm not going to tell you the fate that awaits you in destiny 2 lakshmi 2 i'm very disappointed by it anyway um what do you have for us today i'm still like i said i still think it would be so much cooler if they had like so they have six weapons here right so if he had like 30 okay and you would just have a random six out of the lot or even it doesn't even have to be 30 could be maybe like i don't know 24 and that just they would randomly switch around because now we, we got the exact same ones the whale the waltz the waiting the wounded the wormwood and the warpath which what's with the w thing is it because future war cult anyway we have for the hand cannon the whale and um as i said um until people explain to me this part here, the first row, I'm just going to wing it. Steady hand, I'm guessing means you have better um, recoil control. That's it. Sure shot. And um, quick draw. Let me know in the comments. As I said, this is the one area I'm really not sure of in particular. Then we have armor piercing rounds ground, or penet over penetrate targets. And we have quick draw. This weapon can be drawn unbelievably fast. I think I'm gonna go with the armor piercing rounds. I mean, they do over penetrate targets, but I feel like, I don't know, is quick draw a good mod? I don't know, I feel like it isn't, but then let me know, does it really make a difference if it can be drawn unbelievably fast? Next we have hammer forged versus hot swap. And that's an obvious one. I mean, you could see the difference in the range. So I would definitely go with the hammer forged. I mean, I know people, I remember, there's one thing I remember hearing about weapon rolls for original Destiny is a focus on range, especially when it comes to hand cannons, that the more range for a hand cannon, the better you are. So hammer forged and armor piercing rounds. And then we have reactive reload. Reloading this weapon after a kill gets a damage bonus for a short time. I'm not keen on that. I mean, let me know. As I said, I feel like you'd just be shoot, reload, shoot, reload, shoot, reload. And hand cannons to me just feel so slow to reload. But Hammer Forge, I know people said having increased, improved range is always a great thing for a hand cannon. Next, we have um, the Waltz, it is a pulse rifle. The Waltz. Again, slightly improved optics, improved aim assist. The words aim assist are like an insult to me. I do not like aim assist. Then we have Agile Quick Draw and OEG. Is that any different? I mean, improved optics, 
improved optics, improved aim, oh, improved handling. I don't know. Like I said, I would probably just pick one that was random for the first category. Again, as I said, this is the one area I really would like more knowledge. Then we have extended mag versus quick draw. Now, I would look into how much it increases the magazine because I have seen in the past times where extended mag claims to increase the magazine only for me to select it on, and the magazine does not increase in size. So if the magazine does increase in size, I'll see how by how much. So if it goes from like 30 to 32, it's like, eh, not that good. But if it's a good increase, then I'd go with the extended mag. Otherwise, I mean, quick draw, they don't, both of, neither one of them really stands out unless there's a good increase in the magazine. Then we have Hammer Forge, which is increased range in accuracy versus secret round. Missing a shot from this weapon's burst will fire a fourth shot. Definitely going to go again with the Hammer Forge. I mean, that is a nice boost in range. Um, I like it. I'm definitely going with the Hammer Forge. Then finally, Rodeo reduces the severity of this weapon's recoil. I don't know, I just don't feel like this has a decent stability. I mean, this one feels kind of disappointing. Is it really worth the 150 legendary marks? I don't think so. I mean, come on, we're talking 150 legendary marks. You want 150 legendary marks for this Ekip? I'm just not feeling it. Next, we got the waiting, which is a fusion rifle. Please tell me this is better. MD Reflex, improved handling. Signi See, look, this one is silly. Fusion rifles, I do not get. Look at it. It's, I mean, you definitely going to go with MD Reflex because significantly improved handling versus improved handling versus improved handling. I mean, improved handling, improved handling, significantly improved handling. I, I mean, you know what? No, I'm going to go with the improved handling versus this improved handling. Then we have enhanced battery increases the magazine size versus uh, quick draw. This weapon can be drawn unbelievably fast. Honestly, like I said, like the previous weapon, I would see what the increase in magazine size, magazine size is. If it's a good increase, I mean, especially since this is a fusion rifle, if it like brings up to like seven or eight, I'd be really, really happy. But I would see what the increased magazine size is. Because if it doesn't increase the magazine size, then by default, I'm going to have to use quick draw. But if it does increase the magazine, because as I said, I've seen it and it's really, really annoying where you think, ooh, enhanced battery increases magazine size. Then you select it and it doesn't. So it's like, what's the point then? Next, we have Hammer Forge again. That seems to be the theme this week. It's almost like they buy weapons with mods of a particular type um, in bulk. So another hammer forged versus unflinching. It's easier to aim under fire using this weapon. I mean, come on. Obviously, I'm going to go with hammer forged. Improved range and accuracy. Improved range, of course. So, I don't know. Again, I'm just not. Hot swap. Another hot swap. I don't know. Again, I'm just, I'm not feeling this is worth the 150 legendary marks. I'm not like, I hope uh, other groups have some better weapons because this just doesn't feel worth 150 legendary marks. I mean, you can carry a maximum of 200 legendary marks. So these weapons cost more than your maximum weapon capacity. Weapon, no, no, this, this, these weapons cost more than your legendary marks carrying capacity. It's a lot of, a lot of marks, come on. So that's the, the waiting. Then we have the wounded, which makes me, um, let's see, we got red dot ORA, improved optics, improved handling versus ranged lens. Yeah, I'm definitely going to go with the ranged lens. Why the hell not? Precision scope, super effective range, heavy, with poor recoil control. But I don't know, it seems to be pretty stable. Slightly improved optics, improved aim assist, probably the ranged lens just for the range. Then we have extended mag again. Profit. What? Another extended re mag? Again, I would look and see what the mag extension is. Someone's playing the uh, jukebox downstairs. In the game, not for, for reality. I don't have a jukebox. Versus quick draw. I mean, seriously? I'm, I'd check to see what the extended mag is. Otherwise, I'd go with the quick draw. And then we got small bore, increased range and stability, slower reload, reduced magazine size. I would see what 
combining these two with the magazine size would be because I mean it's either that no oh no 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 I'd go with the triple tap rapidly landing precision hits will return one round to the magazine definitely go with the triple tap so extended mag triple tap and crowd control kills with this weapon grab bonus damage for a short time I guess not that bad nothing to me screams though god roll everything just seems to be like weapons nothing is like weapon just doesn't feel it to me i'm just not feeling it lakshmi too i'm really feeling disappointed lakshmi too maybe i should tell you what you're you're gonna die you, you die in destiny too in fact you die completely unnoticed it's really kind of sad like, I didn't even realize you were dead until someone pointed out that your body just... Yeah, sorry, Lakshmi. It was for these weapons in particular. The Wormwood. Oh, no. Okay, I gotta keep talking over this, because the last time this song played for me, by the way, just so you know, I was playing Destiny 2, and the jukebox was in um the, uh, it was on the lost shore and it's in destiny 2 and i got a copyright strike uh, copyright claim like i it, because i don't monetize my live streams but over the few seconds of that song playing seriously it was literally i go in there to do the lost sector in the the, the forgotten shore and that song starts playing the hope for the future which is literally a song created for destiny and I got a copyright on it. It's like, it's a good thing I don't monetize my live stream. So, anyway, just a warning for people. That's all in particular. Anyway, sorry about that. The worm, I want to have the worm word. All right. The worm word. True sight versus short shot versus quick draw. Hmm, nothing stands out to me. Again, let me know if I'm being stupid about this. I, as I said, I don't know. And I want to get good. This isn't a case of me. No, I want to get good. Armor piercing round versus quick. Dude, what is it with the quick draw? I'm gonna go with the armor piercing rounds. Then we got fitted stock increases weapon stability versus Zen moment. They're both increasing stability. Causing damage with this weapon increases its stability. I'd probably just go with fitted stock because it's going to automatically have increased stability versus having to cause damage for it to increase weapon stability. I mean, this is passive. This is active. Passive in the easy sense. The Yeah, I don't have to do anything to increase weapon stability. And then finally, readying this weapon, uh, hot swap. Again, these weapons feel so meh. Meh, Lakshmi too. Meh. So meh. I just no words locks me too. No words right now. I just I'm not feeling it. I'm disappointed. I'm angry. I expect better stuff next time. I ex I'm not angry locks me too. I'm just disappointed. Then we have the war path. All right. This actually I thought I saw something that's impressive. All right. So we got aggressive launch versus soft launch versus counter mass i think i'm going to go with the soft launch because that that seems more balanced i guess probably i don't know probably soft launch we got field scout Ooh, increases carried ammo capacity okay you got me intrigued lakshmi versus snapshot aiming this weapon is incredibly fast well obviously i'm gonna go with field scout increased ammo capacity obviously this is a heavy you need the more the better and we got javelin increases warhead velocity Versus third eye. Radar stays active while aiming down this weapon's sights. So no tripod. Uh, would have been nice if there would be a tripod. If it were a field scout, a tripod. But javelin, I guess. And then, ooh, grenades and horseshoes. Rockets from this weapon will detonate early based on proximity to targets. All right. This is okay. The field scout automatically and the and the grenades and horseshoes both of those yeah you, 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 i'm interested i am intrigued lakshmi too this is the one good thing you're selling you have one good thing just one it's decent but you should be ashamed and honestly you should have had tripod if you had tripod then i would have immediately just like dismantled anyone in my heavy right now and immediately bought it i'm intrigued 
but I'm also disappointed by the lack of tripod. When I first saw a third eye, for some reason, it made me think of tripod, but it's not tripod, so... <sighs> I'm, 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 I mean... It's better than nothing, Lakshmi, too. Alright, alright. Let's go on. Let's see who's next. I expect better from you. Yeah, I mean, especially since you're called the Fuchsia War Cult, you'd think you'd be preparing us for war, as in you'd be giving us the best of the best, but clearly, you are not. I just... I'm going to tell all my friends, and I'm going to give you a low rating on Yelp this week. Next, we have Arak Jalal. Is it Jalal? Jalal? Jalal. Hi, Arak. Jalal. We need you. I still call him, I am not Starfire's daddy. Which is actually kind of mean to him. Yeah, you're not related to her. Anyway, you got the same usual weapons, but hopefully they are better. Let's see, excuse me. So we got the Extremophile 11. Okay, I'm still waiting for the Extremophile 12. Reflex, steady hand. Oh, EG, no clue, no clue. I would pick one randomly. Let's see, we got, oh my God, what is it with the extended mag? A larger magazine. Okay, snapshot. Seriously, another snapshot? <sighs> really, Arak Jalal? All right, probably go with the extended mag. Depends on the ammo, inc the magazine increase. Perfect balance. This weapon has extremely low recoil versus rodeo. Reduces the severity of this weapon's recoil. Honestly, I wouldn't buy this weapon, so I wouldn't even be choosing. I'd probably go with the perfect balance, but honestly... Finally, glass half full. The bottom half of each magazine causes additional damage. I guess that's okay. You have to remember not to reload before the second half of the magazine. But... Nah. You're not getting any legendary marks or allegiance out of me for that one. Just, no. Keystone 1. Still waiting for the keystone. Oh my dear God. Can you get any suckier than this? So we got MD Reflex, Range Lens, and OEG Rifle Scope. Probably going to go with the Range Lens or the Rifle Scope just for the range. Then we got extended mag a larger magazine versus snapshot seriously wow <sighs> again extended mag depends on the magazine increase then we got perfect balance versus outlaw precision kills with this weapon dramatically increase reload speed i'd probably go with the perfect balance just because and finally Zen moment. Causing damage with this weapon increases its stability. Ugh. I guess maybe I might go with the outlaw then because you don't need the balance because you got it here. I don't know because it just feels like a mishmash of meh and even more meh. I, 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 I'm waiting for the keystone too at this point because that's just meh. Then we have Worlds to Come 001, a fusion rifle. I expect. Oh no. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Can we get any more suckier? First off, we have significantly improved handling versus improved handling versus improved handling. I wonder which one I will pick. Accelerated coils. Reduces weapon charge time in exchange for slightly decreased damage. Okay. Versus snapshot. Yeah, I'll go with the accelerated coils. Why not? Pfft. Let me know. Am I being stupid? Is snapshot any good? Is there any reason to use snapshot? Let me know in the comments below. I'm just feeling so disappointed at this point by these weapon choices. I want something to, like, poof and be like... Yes, you need to spend your legendary marks on this. So far, nothing. Perfect. I mean, the rocket launcher was kind of impressive. But if it had had tripod, you would have definitely won me over. 
perfect balance, low recoil versus unflinching. It's easier to aim under fire. I'd probably go with the perfect balance just because I don't know why not. Nothing <sighs> again, really. <clears throat> yeah, unflinching. And then hidden hand. This weapon gains better target acquisition. Tell me about hidden hand. Is it any good? Should I be running for this weapon? Because I don't know. I'm not feeling this weapon. Honestly, nothing. Like I said, just the rocket launcher has stood out for me as being impressive in any way. Last ditch, zero, zero, 001. A shotgun. What have we got? Smooth ballistics. Accurized ballistics. Soft ballistics. Probably go with the soft, soft ballistics. You can see the improvement. There we have, excuse me. Wow. Hand loaded. This weapon is effective at, at an extended range. Okay, finally something different. I think I would go with the hand loaded versus, dear God, not another snapshot. Snapshot. Definitely going to go with the extended range from hand loaded. We got perfect balance versus cascade. Melee kills automatically reload a portion of this weapon's magazine. I think I would go with cascade because this is a shotgun. It is a pain in the butt to reload. You do not have the hunter evade that reloads in Destiny 2, which I think is one of my favorite things about Destiny 2. The hunters evade for reload because that thing I use all the time when I need to like reload a rocket launcher. That's about it. But that thing is awesome. I love the hunter evade that reloads with. <laughs> I hope for work. It's been a long day. And finally, full auto. All right. This weapon can be fired in full auto mode. Now, that seems cool, and I will admit, a full auto shotgun is awesome. So this one, I'm slightly tempted, because I like the range, uh, the cascade, and the full auto. So I, this one, you, you got me intrigued, Arak Jalal. But the only, my only downside when it comes to full auto is um, it eats through ammo. I've noticed that. It, like, it burns through ammo. But let me know, should I pick this last ditch zero zero one up? It seems okay. Not 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 as bad as everything else. You know, there's been a lot of ye kip in this week, but I mean beggars can't be choosers, I guess. Of course I could always wait wait until next week. It's not like well no, these legendary marks if I'm gonna do um if I'm gonna be doing story playlist missions, I'm probably gonna have to spend some Legendary mark, so maybe I'll pick up this. I don't know. It depends on what else is out there. What do you know? What do you think? Should I go for the latch ditch? That means I have to join dead orbit though. How much is it? Okay. All right. Then we got the bitter edge 10. Now, this is not the type of shot sniper rifle I like. As I said, I like high impact, low rate of fire sniper rifles because to me, I use a sniper rifle from a distance to get enemies from a distance. It's, I don't really, honestly, even in Destiny 2, I don't use sniper rifles often. So it's like, oh, you get a guard roll sniper rifle from doing the Festival of the Lost. Okay, that's cool, but honestly, I need to use sniper rifles more to practice because my aim sucks with sniper rifles. It's just, I use scout rifles for it. You get more ammo for the scout rifle. You still get a decent range. Now, you don't get the full sniper rifle range. It probably is better in Crucible to use a sniper rifle. But I just, I'm not, I, I still have that traumatic mem, that traumatic memory. Yeah, not really. Of uh, using a sniper rifle and being like, why isn't this killing anything? Only to realize that I've been stupid and not paying attention to the impact. So, sight, sis versus ambush versus taxis and yeah these videos are so long so you get to see me making an idiot of myself because they're unedited i just go through it all skip rounds ceramic jacketed rounds ricochet on herd surfaces surfaces versus snapshot honestly if it were snapshot if it were anything else i probably would have picked it but this just seems pointless I mean, I don't know. I don't really use this. Like I said, I don't use this kind of sniper rifle. For the way I use sniper rifles, skip rounds would really not 
make a difference because I'm just going, oh, there's a vandal all the way over there and I need to get rid of him. Or there's a hive wizard on that island all the way over there and I just want to get rid of her. So skip rounds really wouldn't make much of a difference for me. So I'd probably, but it's snapshot. And we got perfect balance, which doesn't seem like it really needs it. Kills with this weapon while critically wounded. You know, I would go with the life support. Why not? Honestly, this thing has decent stability as it is. It doesn't need perfect balance. I mean, <sighs> kills with, I mean, I guess if, I mean, it. I guess the people are probably running around with a sniper rifle shooting. So I guess perfect balance is probably better, but I would go with life support. But then honestly, I wouldn't pick the sniper rifle up anyway. I like my Devil's Dawn. Then we got Hidden Hand. Oh, better target acquisition. So then I definitely, I would go Hidden Hand, Life Support, and Skip Rounds. But let me know. All right, that's the sniper rifle. Then finally, we have another rocket launcher. We got Unto Dust 00. Okay. So we got aggressive launch versus linear compensator versus hard launch. Honestly, I think I guess I'd go with the 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 hard launch, just because of the way the yeah. Oh no, we got flared magwell reload this weapon even faster versus lightweight. Well, the hell, this weapon grants a plus two character agility. Oh, right. A flared magwell. Reload this whip. I think I would go with the flared magwell. I would try the reload. If it really does make a difference, I would use it. Otherwise, I'd go with lightweight. But let me know. Is flared magwell any good? Comment down below. We got heavy payload. Increased warhead blast radius. Okay. And finally, grenades and horseshoes. Rockets from this weapon will detonate early based on proximity to targets. Now, I'll admit, the moment you put grenades and horseshoes... Oh, wait, I missed something. Tripod. Okay. I didn't see that because of the way things are. Tripod. Hold three shells and then grenades and horseshoes. All right. This is sort of... Now, if you had combined this with the future war called Warpath, it would be the perfect ultimate rocket launcher. But you know what? This isn't that bad either. You got a tripod, so you got three rockets which is nice, and you got grenades and horseshoes. So, you know what? This isn't that bad either. I think, though, I would prefer the future war cult one because while I like being able to hold three shells in a single tube, I prefer having more ammo than being able to, like, the one that's on the future war cult one has, I think it's called Field Scout, which allows you to carry more ammo, which I think is better than Tripod. I mean, tri I would personally prefer tripod with field scout, but tripod, while it's great to have three rockets, I prefer having six rockets uh, and no tripod versus four rockets and tripod kind of thing. Cool. But this isn't the bad. All right, Arakjal, Ali, you impressed me. You actually had two decent weapons compared to Lakshmi 2, who had one. Maybe I'll switch allegiances just to protest. Next we have the Vanguard Quartermaster. Hello, Vanguard Quartermaster. You have a lot of weapons, but they're all the same ones as before. So we have the Continental and Auto Rifle. Hello, Auto Rifle. All right, we got MD Reflex, Quick Draw, and OEG Rifle Scope. I think I would go with the Rifle Scope because of the range. Because one can always use range, especially with an auto rifle. Then we got focus fire. When zoomed, this weapon fires slower but causes additional damage. Versus grenadier. Kills with this weapon, reduce... Th I think I would go with grenadier. While I like this, additional damage, reducing the cooldown of your grenade. I think I would prefer that more. Add something like frosties and you'd have even better grenade recharge rate. So, grenadier it is. Hand laid stock... No, 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 no. Armor piercing rounds. I'd go with the armor piercing rounds. I'm not going to cut my range in half. I mean, seriously, this is an auto rifle. It's not like range is. So, yeah, armor piercing rounds, grenadier. Then we have hidden hand. This weapon gains better target acquisition. I mean, it's okay. It's not terrible. 
I'm not like weeping in horror at what he's offering already. On top of that, he doesn't require me to sign any kind of loyalty. I'm already loyal to the Vanguard. Parthian shot. What have we got here? We got red dot improved optics, improved handling. Sure, sure shot versus OEG. I guess I'd go with sure shot. I don't know. Outlaw precision kills with this weapon. Dramatically increased reload speed versus take a knee. Crouching grants improved accuracy and stability as well as reduced aim time and flinch under fire. Honestly, I crouch so seldomly in combat that I think I would just go with outlaw. I mean, I'm never going to use take a knee. So outlaw precision kills with this weapon dramatically increased reload speed. Yeah, I'd go with outlaw. Small bore versus rifled barrel. I think I'd go with the rifled bower. That's a nice increase in range. And I mean, it is a pulse rifle. So yeah, I think I would go with rifled barrel. I mean, especially since I'll have a slightly faster reload speed with outlaw, which will balance the reload drop a little. And then we have third eye. Oh joy. Radar stays active while aiming down this weapon's sights. Uh, it's okay. I mean, it's not absolute junk like Lakshmi 2 is giving us. Angel's Advocate, a scout rifle. I like scout rifles, honestly. We got MD Reflex versus Ranged Lens versus OEG Rifle Scout. I think I'm going to go with Ranged Lens. As I said, I guess on this category. Then we have Zen Moment. Causing damage with this weapon increases its stability versus take a knee. Yeah, I'm not going to use take a knee. Even no matter how good take a knee is, I know my combat and it's going to be really difficult for me to remember to crouch in the middle of combat. So I think Zen Moment is probably the one I would go with. Then we have small bore versus armor piercing rounds. I'm definitely going to go with the small bore. That increase in range is a lot more. And then if we add Hidden Hand, which gives better target acquisition. So we have Hidden Hand, Small Bore, and Zen Moment. It's okay. Again, it's not something that I would, like, the moment it drops, if I were to randomly get these rolls on a weapon dropped for me, I wouldn't be like, no, this is horrible. On the other hand, you know, it's not like something that is like, God roll. But then maybe I have higher expectations of what a god roll is i expected for example with a rocket launcher to have tripod and field scout and grenades and horseshoes so maybe my expectations for god roll are too high and they don't exist so i'm expecting stuff that would probably maximize everything anyway let me know what i should be looking for in say a scout rifle or a pulse rifle or whatever you know yell at me in the comments be like cat how can you not know this? Not going to take a... F I want to learn. I want to get good. All right? How dare you? A hand cannon. I love hand cannons. We got steady hand versus fast draw versus quick draw. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I think I see something I like. Mulligan. Missing a shot has a chance to return ammo directly to the magazine versus rescue mag chance to refill this rip the magazine when critically wounded i'm gonna go with mulligan i mean this seems decent but i rescue mag chance to refill this weapon. but I, I like mulligan and then we have hammer forge improved range and accuracy versus explosive rounds range explosions Range, explosions. You know I'm going to pick the explosive rounds, obviously. I can't believe we finally have a weapon with explosive rounds. And finally, range finder. Aiming this weapon increases its effective range. Now, this is a good hand cannon. Look at this. We got range finder and explosive rounds. All right. I like this. All right. I'm going to go with... Yeah, this isn't that bad. Honestly, finally something with explosive rounds. This is not, I mean, I wouldn't, I don't know, is this god roll? I wouldn't really call it god roll, but I like it because of the explosive rounds. It's easy to please me. Just slap explosive rounds or firefly on something, and I will be definitely very happy. 
Then we have X Asterisk, the Star Trek fusion rifle. And we've got improved aim assist. Ugh, definitely not. Improved handling and even more improved handling. I would pick one of the improved handling simply on principle. I don't like improved aim assist. I don't like aim assist. To me, aim assist is an insult. Then we got unflinching. It's easier to aim under fire when using this weapon versus underdog. This weapon gains a boost to range and handling when health is slow. I don't know. I genuinely don't know. I would probably pick one randomly and not care. Boost to range. I get. I mean, the boost to range it is nice, but your health has to be low. So I'm not sure. Then we have small bore. Increase range and stability, slower reload, reduce magazine size versus accelerated coils. Reduces weapon charge time in exchange for slightly decreased damage. Depending, because I don't see a drop, depending on the reduced magazine size, I'd probably go with small bore because I like the increase in range. And finally, aiming a range finder. So this is a range beast, I guess. Range finder and small bore seem to be decent increases in range i guess um i mean i don't know is this a, i'm not screaming for this but maybe i'm wrong um anyway then we got a uh, teacup tempest for some reason this one keeps making me think of alice in wonderland and sort of like the sidearm that uh the mad hatter would carry the teacup tempest teacup tempest True Sight versus Fast Draw versus Quick Draw. Then we got Zen Moment. Causing damage with this weapon increases its stability versus Crowd Control. Kills with this weapon grant bonus damage for a short time. I think I would actually go with the Crowd Control because you're probably going to get a decent number of kills with this. Then we have Fitted Stock versus Lightweight. I, I don't know. Probably fitted stock, I guess. This Or no, lightweight. You know, why the hell not? Honestly, this weapon is not really... And finally, hidden hand. Yeah, I'd go with lightweight because it's got hidden hand. But... <sighs> Feeling disappointed by this one. Really disappointed. Occam's Razor, a shotgun. We've got smart drift control... Accurized Ballistics and Soft Ballistics. I think I would go with the Accurized Ballistics. No, no, no. Soft Ballistics. I mean, the range is slightly less than with Accurized, but you're not losing all that stability. So Soft Ballistics, then we have Performance Bonus. Kills with this weapon have a chance to grant bonus reserve ammo versus Army of One. Quick, unassisted kills with this weapon. I would go with Army of One. The reduced grenade and melee cooldown I like. So I would definitely go with Army of One for this. If I were to pick it up, small bore versus quick draw. I'm going to go with a small bore because even though I get an increased range with soft ballistics, um, I'd like even more range with small bore. So small bore, um, Army of One, and soft ballistics. And then finally... Final round. The last round in magazine deals bonus damage. That's going to be a tough one because, you know, you have to remember not to reload before you get to the last round. But, I mean, it's okay. It's okay. I'd give you 100 legendary marks for this one. 100 legendary marks, right? All right. Then we got... Seventh Sense, another low-impact, high-rate-of-fire sniper rifle. Because, yay! I remember I got so frustrated because I was looking for a decent sniper rifle, and they were all like, low-impact, high-rate-of-fire, sight sis versus short gaze versus tax. I think I'd go with this tax six, I guess. I don't know. Then we have Underdog. This weapon gains a boost to range and handling when health is low. Versus life support. They're both almost the same thing. No, they're not. This one gains a boost to range in handling when health is low. And this gives you a chance to start regenerating health. Uh, I guess I'd go with the life support. Then you have quick draw. Versus small bore. I think I would go with the small bore. Definitely this because of the increased range and stability. 
the I'd go small bore. And finally, Hidden Hand. This weapon gains better target acquisition. Honestly, though, like I said, I'm not a big fan. Let me know in the comments below what I'm missing out with low impact, high rate of fire sniper rifles. What are they used for? What are they good for? Let me know. Because like I said, I, if, when I do use a sniper rifle, which for a while I used them and then I stopped, I tend to now use, like I said, scout rifles instead. Let me know what I'm missing out from uh, scout rifle, uh, sniper rifles with low impact. Um, what do you use them for? Then we have the Bone Crusher machine gun. We've got Accurized Ballistics, Linear Compensator versus Field Choke, and honestly, I have no clue. I would probably pick a random one. Then we have Eye of the Storm. This weapon becomes more accurate as your health gets lower versus Take a Knee, Crouching Grant. I I'd go with the Eye of the Storm simply because I rarely crouch in combat. So, Take a knee, even though, like I said, it gives you improved accuracy and stability, as well as reduced aim time and flinch under fire. I'm almost never crouching, so really wouldn't get anything out of it. So I have the storm. This weapon becomes more accurate as your health gets lower. Then we have braced frame, increased stability, reduced magazine size versus armor piercing rounds. I'd probably go with the armor piercing round. Um... I mean, it's a machine gun. I guess the increased stability is nice, but I'd see what the magazine drop looks like because it would drop the magazine and this is a machine gun and I'd rather not drop the magazine size too much. And finally, hidden hand. So I don't even need the increased stability because hidden hand, this weapon gains better target. What is the difference between target acquisition and stability? Does that mean it's like an aim assist or something where it can, anyway, let me know. Um. I don't know. As I said, this really isn't standing out for me. Um, I, I don't feel like it's a god roll. Let me know in the comments. Um, then we have this assembly required. We've got aggressive launch versus soft launch versus counter mass. I guess I'd go with the, the soft launch, maybe. Then we have battle runner. Kills with this weapon. Grant a brief boost to the sprint's top speed. Versus the last resort. This weapon handles and reloads faster. Oh, when they're the last living player of their fire team. Yeah, unless you're with other people, this is useless. So I'd just go with Battle Runner. Then we have Quick Draw versus Javelin. I'd definitely go with Javelin. Why not? Increase warhead velocity. Because, I mean, let me know. Am I, I just, I don't feel like Quick Draw really draws me. Let me know. Am I being unfair to Quick Draw? Is quick draw something good to have? Is it something that when you see it on a weapon, you go, damn, I need that weapon? Let me know. Then finally, tracking. Shells from this weapon track their targets. <sighs> yeah, tracking is good. Honestly, tracking ruined my aim with a rocket launcher because I got so used to using rocket launchers with tracking in original Destiny that when I finally got to play Destiny 2, which when it first dropped, there were no rocket launchers with tracking. My aim sucked. It still kind of does because most of my rocket launchers in Destiny, original Destiny, have tracking, especially Galahorn. So, I, 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 I think tracking is the only thing that actually adds anything to this. But honestly, not really feeling it. Anyway, let's see, who do we have next? So next we have the Crucible Quartermaster. Going through the security, security. Maybe now I'll go through my vault. Maybe I should live stream that and be like, all right, should I keep that? Should I not keep that? And then just go through my vault and have people telling me what I should and should not dismantle or something. Much still lies uh, I prefer this tower so much. <laughs> all right. Hi, Crucible Quartermaster. What have we got here? We've got the Zero Day Dilemma. An auto rifle. All right. Mid reflex versus quick draw. Versus OEG rifle scope. Again, I would probably pick something random that adds more green to the map. But I'm not, I said, I don't know the, the first category. So, as I said, teach me. 
We get a focus fire. When zoomed, this weapon fires slower, but causes additional damage, which makes me think of Soros' regime. Then we got danger close. This weapon gains increased reload and handling when two or more enemies are in close proximity. I guess I'd go with focused fire. Hmm. Not sure. Small bore, increased range and stability versus rifled barrel. I think I would go with the rifled barrel. That is an impressive jump to range. And finally, counterbalance. This weapon has increased stability. Yeah, I think I would go with um, rifled barrel, but I'm not feeling it. Anyway, let me know. It isn't these bounties, by the way. I think it's the ones with shacks that will give you trials weapons. I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments. I remember hearing somebody say that they were getting trials weapons from doing crucible bounties. Not these bounties. The ones they were getting, uh, uh, not trial weapons, were, were from these here. These. The more um, involved ones. But let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. I thought I had heard something about that. That it was rare, but you would sometimes get trials weapons. And I think I might have. Anyway, next we have the B-29 party favor. Uh, pulse rifle, MD reflex, steady hand versus OEG. I guess steady hand. Why not? Outlaw, precision kills with this weapon, dramatically increased reload speed versus life support. I think I'd go with the outlaw, with the life support. Why not? Why not? Nothing special. Small boar versus feathered mag. Now I can go with a small boar. Why not? More range. More range is good. Ugh, third eye. What? Ow. I sl shoulder. Third eye. Radar stays active while aiming down this weapon sight. I, like I said, I know it's probably very good in Crucible, but other than that, it's rare when third eye really helps in PvE. So next we have a scout rifle. The hero formula. And we got red dot ORA, ranged lens, blah, 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 OEG, probably ranged lens, because more range is better. And I said, I heard somebody say that actually increasing range increases damage because it gets farther away. So that means up close, it does because there's more force necessary for it to have the increased range. So it causes more damage. Let me know in the comments. I remember listening to a YouTube video a couple of years back that I think said that. But I, I if let me know if I'm right or wrong. So we got Rodeo reduces the severity of this weapon's recoil versus Mulligan. Missing a shot has a chance to return ammo directly to the magazine. And this, I, I read the ones that I like forget what they are. Uh, Mulligan. So I think I would go with Mulligan. Then we have Perfect Balance, Low Recoil versus Hammer Forged. You know what? I would go with Hammer Forged, Improved Range. So we got Mulligan, Hammer Forged, and Third Eye. Again, the, her Third Eye feels like such a waste of a mod slot. But Hammer Forge is well again, excuse me, especially Hammer Forge, the improved range and accuracy I like. So maybe not so trashy. Then we got uh, the Palindrome, which, as I said, every single time, I can't forget that time it was a god roll and everyone was like, you have to get the Palindrome. Let's see what we got. Steady Hand versus Sure Shot versus Quick Draw. I guess I'd go with, I don't know. But we got Hot Swap, reading this weapon, grants a brief period of bonus accuracy, versus Spray and Play, increase the reload speed of this weapon when the mag is empty. I, I don't know. None, either of these strikes me as being particularly good. Let me know in the comments. Honestly, Hot Swap versus Spray and Play. I've heard people, I think I've heard it said that Spray and Play is really good. Let me know. Then we got Reinforced Barrel, so increased range, reduced stability, versus... Casket mag, increased magazine size, reduced stability. I'm going to go with reinforced barrel because I know, as I said earlier, I've always heard people say with a hand cannon, you want the increased range. And that is a decent chunk of increased range. So I'd go with 
reinforced barrel, and then we have range finder. Aiming this weapon increases its effective range. I mean, let me know also, does it like double up? So if you go with reinforced barrel, and then you add range finder, are you going to get even more range to your weapon? Let me know in the comments. I mean, does it, is it worth it to do something like that where you have two different mods that add to the range? Or is there a limit to how much range that can be added to a weapon? And so there's no point to using both mods. So for example, if I put range finder, would it be better than to put, I don't know, casket mag? Because adding, using reinforced barrel with range finder won't really increase the range that much. So let me know in the comments. They said, school me on this stuff, all right? I never really paid it to, honestly, I never really paid attention to weapon rolls because all I wanted to do was go and play the game. So I would just pick weapons that, I don't know, sounded cool or felt cool or, you know, had a rate of fire that I liked or, you know, like, for example, I like the Mita multi-tool. I feel like that one is a decent scout rifle with a good combination of rate of fire and damage so i used to use the might of my multi-tool um also it depends on when i got it so like i got boolean gemini was one of my first excuse me exotic weapons so i used it a lot because it was the only exotic i had at one point so it's like boolean gemini i used a lot so let me know in the comments anyway that was the palindrome we got the each new day fusion rifle so we got MD Reflex versus Red Dot versus OEG because significantly improved handling versus improved handling versus improved handling. Gee, I wonder what I would pick. Then we got Knee Pads versus Underdog. This weapon gains a boost to range and handling when health is low. I would go with Underdog. Sliding further, just... <sighs> I mean, I guess it works in Crucible, but honestly, nah. We got braced frame, increased stability, reduced magazine size versus accelerated coils. Reduces weapon charge time in exchange for slightly decreased damage. I don't know. Like This does not feel like a... I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. Let me know. I'm not liking this weapon at all. This feels so cheap. And hidden hand. This weapon gains better target acquisition let me know in the comments below i mean there's very few weapons i'm feeling impressed by and this is not one of them righto all right that was the fusion rifle then we have the 34 curtain call a shotgun this high impact weapon was de designed to be a literal showstopper all right so we got Linear Compensator, CQB Ballistics versus Aggressive Ballistics. Uh, I'm going to choose the one that doesn't drop the range. So I'm probably going to keep it the way it is because I want range. Then we got Replenish. This weapon's magazine will be refueled whenever you unleash your super versus Life Support. Kills with this weapon all critically wounded did have a chance to start regenerating health. Uh, I don't know. I'd probably go with replenish because magazine being refilled on the other hand this sounds decent as well but nothing really stands out let me know in the comments below <sighs> not feeling it reinforced barrel versus perfect balance definitely gonna go for the reinforced barrel the increased range so um i mean i don't know probably reinforced barrel for the range but that's about it and finally, crowd control. Kills with this weapon grant bonus damage for a short time. Yeah. It seems okay. It's not an immediate dismantle. I mean... But is it worth 150 legendary marks is the question you have to ask yourself. It could be okay. But we're talking 150 legendary marks. Is it worth it? And we got Anton's Rule, a sidearm. We've got Steady Hand versus Fast Draw versus Quick Draw. And honestly, nothing is calling out to me. So let me know in the comments. Then we got Zen Moment. Causing damage with this weapon increases its stability. Okay, versus Feeding Frenzy. Kills with this weapon increase reload speed for a short time. 
Oh joy, it's either stability or reload speed. I'm probably gonna go with the reload speed, but honestly, really Anton? Don't include it unless you intend to use it. Well, let's see what the rest of these rolls are because I may not intend to use it. Hand loaded, this weapon is effective at an extended range versus high caliber rounds. Oversized bullets, rounds built to stagger targets and leave them reeling. Now, here's my question. High caliber rounds, do they work when Berserk is in effect? Because Berserk means that enemies do not stagger, which I know from experience is a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun sarcastically, by the way. When uh, um, Berserk. So when Berserk is in effect, especially against Cabal. So would high caliber rounds actually combat that? Sort of like how with Red Death, you can use Red Death against exposure. So let me know, is high caliber rounds something good to have, especially when Berserk is in effect? Okay. But yeah, I would probably go for the range if otherwise, you know, unless Berserk is in effect. Then we have rangefinder. And again, like I said, let me know, can you double up on that? Can you go with rangefinder and hand loaded? Both of them increase the range, or do you have to only go for one? Because then I'd go for rangefinder and high caliber rounds. Let me know in the comments. Like I said, I don't know. Can you increase the range on two different mods? Or does it limit eventually? Next, we have a high impact high impact low rate of fire sniper rifle which is something i do like now you've got hawkeye versus view tech versus taxis right i'd probably pick something of uh, i don't know then we have triple tap rapidly landing precision hits will return one round to the magazine versus perfectionist magazine is refunded if all fire shots are fired or precision kills you know what? I might go for Perfectionist and see how well I do. If I'm able to handle Perfectionist, I would keep it. Otherwise, I would go with Triple Tap. I think I can handle Perfectionist. If I'm shooting from a distance, I might go for, for Perfectionist. Otherwise, I'd go with Triple Tap. And then we have Armor Piercing Rounds versus Perfect Balance. Honestly, since for me, that really doesn't make a difference because I'm usually like shooting for one specific target in the head from a distance. Armor piercing rounds, while well, seems nice, really isn't a big deal. Let me know if I'm, if I'm being dumb about armor piercing rounds. I, I'd probably go with, unless of course we have hidden hand. Then we have hidden hand. This weapon gains better target acquisition. So I don't know, I guess hidden hand, perfect balance and probably either triple tap or perfectionist, depending on, you know, how I feel confident with my aim. Um, you know, I, I, it depends on, I, like I said, I might go for triple tap initially until I get better because it's been a while since I've really used sniper rifles. So there was a time where I had a decent aim with sniper rifles, but I might go with triple tap simply because it's been a while. I don't know. Um, and we got a machine gun, chaotic neutral, sounds like something from D&D, &D, CQB ballistics, linear compensator, and field choke. Uh, I'll probably keep it the way it is. That is a lot of drop in stability for a machine gun. Unflinching, it's easier to aim under fire using this weapon. Yeah, I wouldn't use take a knee. Take a knee, as I said, I rarely remember to crouch in combat. So take a knee would be utterly useless. So I would go with the unflinching. It's easier to aim under fire using this weapon. Small bore, increased range and stability versus armor piercing rounds. You know what? I might go with the armor piercing rounds. These iridium core rounds over penetrate targets. With a machine gun, especially if you're shooting into a mob, this would actually be decent. So I think I would go with the armor piercing rounds. And then crowd control kills with this weapon this damage for a short excuse me for a short time so crowd control armor piercing rounds and unflinching but honestly there's nothing that's really standing out to me crucible quartermaster i'm feeling disappointed let's see if you have a decent rocket launcher all right what have we got we got aggressive launch small drift control versus counter mass all right maybe i don't know Probably go with that countermass. 
Then we got vacuum. Increase the pickup radius of ammo drops for this weapon. Versus danger close. This weapon gains increased reload and handling when two or more enemies are in close proximity. I don't know. Let me know. I don't know. Danger close versus um, vacuum. Vacuum reminds me of Warframe. Um, quick draw. This weapon can be drawn, I uh, believe, versus javelin. I think I would go with the javelin. Is quick draw any good? Let me know in the comments, but... And finally, tracking. I mean, that's the only good thing this thing has. Tracking. Shells fired from this weapon. But honestly, even with the tracking, this really doesn't hit me as a, a really good weapon. Uh, I mean, tracking is good, but at least the future, the 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 uh, dead orbit one, I believe, had um, tripod, which allowed you to carry three rockets in the tube. So if I were to pick, I would pick either the rocket launcher from Future War Cult or the frock, the the uh, the rocket launcher from um, Dead Orbit. I would not go for this one. I mean, yeah, it's got tracking, but those two are better rocket launchers than this one. Kind of disappointed with this one. Um, that's just me. So, Crucible Quartermaster, not really feeling anything I'd be picking up from him. Oh, Papa John, I want some pizza. See what we else, have we added, gotten any new people? So it's just three right now. Eh, pretty new, not that new, I mean, Probably their first character, and they're at level 32, 1605. So, I mean, they are definitely a new player, just not that new. I mean, they're level 32, so they've been playing a while. Then you have very, you know, old player. Working their way up to light 400, 389. They could also be doing weapon tests, which... Let me just check on that. Well, if there's anything, because I'm going to make videos if there's anything, like, tricks or anything about them. Otherwise, they're pretty, um, eh, Vex, Crucible, Hive, Double Kills. Yeah. Double Kills, by the way, like I said, work in Crota's End. So that should make things easier. Just go down to Crota's End for the Double Kills. And now we are heading to the last one. Um... New Monarchy, which, as I said, I don't like New Monarchy. They want to install a dictator for life, and yet their weapons have very anti-dictator following names. Uh-huh, you're fighting for a dictator for life. Nothing you can do can help me. You want a dictator. Go away. Never gonna... Anyway, unless they have very good weapons, then maybe... And already I'm seeing they, they don't have good weapons. MD Reflex, Quick Draw, OEG. Probably going to go with the Quick Draw because that's the only... I don't know. We got Extended Mag, a larger magazine versus Quick Draw. <sighs> versus Quick Draw and Quick Draw. I would look at the size of the Extended Mag, but that's about it. We got Perfect Balance and Hot Swap. Brief period. Now nah, I'd go with perfect balance because brief period of bonus accuracy versus yeah I'd go with the perfect balance so extended mag perfect balance persistence this weapon grows more accurate I mean this is probably a very accurate auto rifle but that's about it I'd say it's just a very accurate auto rifle so maybe good for crucible I guess a good accurate auto rifle would probably be good for crucible let me know in the comments let's see Am I getting this right? Next, we have a hand cannon, the Free Will 3, which, like I said, makes no sense for a group that wants to install a dictator for life. Seriously, I just, I don't like you, Executor Hideo. Hideo. There is, a, like I said, there's an announcement at some point where K6 is like, Executor Hideo, you know what you did. Watch yourself. True Sight IS. Fast draw versus quick draw. High caliber rounds. As I said, let me know. Does this work against Berserk? It staggers targets to leave them reeling. Versus quick draw. I'm not feeling the quick draw. I've, seriously, how many quick draws do we need? 
probably go with the high caliber rounds. And we got Perfect Balance versus Relentless Tracker. Kills with this weapon grant enhanced motion tracker resolution for a short time. Uh, I guess I'd go with Perfect Balance. I don't know. I'm not feeling this one. I'm not feeling it. Reactive Reload. Reloading this weapon after a kill grants a damage bonus. For Seriously? So basically, after you get a kill, you need to reload so you can get d bonus damage. This weapon sucks. I mean, I think it does. Maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like this weapon sucks. And I don't feel the need to buy it. And honestly, I wish, I wish I could, like, buy it and then throw it off the side of the tower. Just to be like, yeah, Executive Hideo, this is what I think of your trashy weapon. Which, by the way, does anybody else remember in Destiny 2 when you used to have the faction rallies and you'd be able to pick up a weapon? I would never join any of the faction rallies because I like to remain... Um, I have this idea that my guardian would go from faction to faction. And I figure during the faction rallies, it's sort of like they're trying to get you... Like like when colleges have these like club events where they try to get everyone to join their club. And so they make... They put food sometimes because everyone knows cupcakes is one of the best ways to get you to join any random club or in high school. And so I figured every one of the factions would have huge spreads of food. And my guardian would go from faction to faction, eating a ton of free food, pretending to be East interested in each faction, and never join joining any of them and eventually they'd start to notice this random hunter who's just there to eat the food so finally he takes his cloak folds it hangs it over his belt and goes titan and so there he's walking around dressed in hunter armor eating their food and um never joining any of the factions so yeah i made up my own story about how my guardian never joined any of the factions but i used to buy the weapons even though they were very very expensive i used to buy the weapon for the winning faction but i never joined any of the factions but anyone else remember that that was cool especially when you got a weapon from the faction that won i like that there was so much war going on anyway that's me rambling. Impeacher 5. See, Impeacher 5. You want to install a dictator for life and you have a weapon called the Impeacher 5. Steady hand to IS versus sure shot versus quick draw. Nothing stands out to me. Then we got armor piercing rounds versus snapshot. I guess the armor piercing rounds. Hand loaded, extended rage versus relentless tracker. I think I would go with the hand load because like I said, everything I've heard is that range is good. Go for range. Cat, get the range. So though this is a sidearm, I still go for the range. Let me know. And finally, reactive reload. Reloading this weapon after a kill grants damn uh, this is just horrible. Horrible trash. I mean, again, let me know. Am I being stupid about this weapon? I just feel like, especially with a sidearm, reloading this weapon after a kill against grants a damage bonus for a short time. Just feels like what? So you, I'm guessing you shoot something, kill it, it gives you the damage bonus, then you shoot a whole bunch of other stuff. I don't know. Impeacher 5. Impeacher 5. I'm gonna throw it off the side of the tower. Let's see if Impeacher 5 can fly. Bad Council 4. Because that's all you give me, Executor Hideo. Bad Council. Got Smooth Ballistics, Field Choke, and Soft Ballistics. Pfft, nothing stands out. I guess I'd stick with Smooth Ballistics out of sheer laziness. Flared Magwell. Reload this weapon even faster. Versus Quick Draw. This weapon can be drawn unbelievably fast. I'm going to go with flare, Flared Magwell because this is a shotgun and they are so slow to reload. So hell, if I have to choose between reloading and drawing, I'm going to go with the reloading. All right? Just, just going to go with the reloading. Then we got Small Bore, increased range and stability versus Cascade. Melee kills automatically reload a portion of this weapon's magazine. While I like that, especially since it is a shotgun, which means the reload is boring and slow as hell, I want an increase to the range. But let me know in the comments, what would you pick? Small Bore or Cascade? I do like Cascade, but I'm thinking I'm going with Small Bore. And finally, Full Auto. This weapon can be fired in Full Auto mode, which like I've said, okay, it's decent. Having Full Auto on a shotgun is very cool, but it also eats through the ammo. That's just me. It feels like it would eat through the ammo ridiculously fast. But 
it's still cool. So don't 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 be like, oh, cat, what are you talking about? Full auto is awesome. Yes, I'm saying it's awesome, but I'm also saying it does eat through the ammo. That's the bad counsel. All right, then we got the Deposition Seven, which is a mid. I mean, it's got some decent impact and decent rate of fire. It's Ooh, I think I like this one already. So we got Hawkeye, Short Gaze, and Eagle Eye. Then we got Explosive Rounds, which you know I'm going with that automatically versus Lightweight Explosive Rounds. Duh. Perfect Balance versus Mulligan. Uh, missing a chance. I guess I'd go with Mulligan. I mean, this has decent stability as it is. And then finally, Hidden Hand. This weapon gains better target acquisition. So yeah, Hidden Hand, Mulligan. The only thing I like about this weapon is the explosive rounds. But honestly, I'm happy with my sniper rifles. So I have three of the Devil's Dawn, which includes Firefly. So. All right. It's deposition, right? Finally, last but not least, First Citizen. Impress me, Executor Hideo. This is your last chance. I don't know much about these three. I think I'd go with Field Choke because there's an increase to range. I mean, yeah, I'd probably go with that. All right, Field Choke because range and stability. Yeah. We got high caliber rounds built to stagger targets versus... Uh, lightweight, I'd go with the high caliber rounds because I want everybody I'm shooting around me with my machine gun to stagger. I want it to be a party, a stagger party. Everyone is staggering. Righto. We got perfect, perfect balance on the machine gun? That's interesting. Versus life leech. Three rapid kills with this weapon heals a small amount and starts health regeneration. Huh. I think, you know what? A part of me is just tempted to go with perfect balance to see what it's like on a machine gun so yeah why the hell not um that's interesting perfect balance on a machine i don't think i've seen that before and finally i have the storm this weapon becomes more accurate as your health gets lower hmm let me know what you think because this is interesting the perfect balance on the machine gun i have to admit i find interesting but honestly is it worth joining new monarchy to pick this up let me know in the comments below. Is there anything that stands out that I should be picking up? Let me know in the comments below. Have I said anything stupid? Please correct me in the comments below. I want to be corrected because this, correcting me is the only way I'm going to learn. As I said, I tend to, I never really looked at weapon rolls. I just wanted to play, which is also why my post is so full because it's like I just come and at this point, I don't care. I just want to play Destiny, which is both a good and a bad thing. Impatient to play. Anyway, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. And uh, let's see if I can get to those armor rolls next. I will be making a Zer location video tomorrow, though. Friday morning. Cool.